E. Oh, okay. We're live. <laughs> We're live. So, hi guys. Welcome to DIY Courage. Um, where we've moved over to Google Hangout. So, hopefully, we've got some people joining us. Uh, if you guys are joining us, please let us know in the um, chat on the side, and we'll keep an eye. Also, if you have any questions for Sarah or I or Lee or the other Sarah, um, definitely let us know. So, Sarah, what have you been up to this week? Oh, boy. Well, a lot. <laughs> I, woke up, I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning and walked to, like, the local park and laid out my towel and started working. And I'm like, people probably think I'm homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look homeless? Did you have clean clothes? I was in athletic now? clothes. I was oh. wearing the same thing I'm wearing now. But... <laughs> I was like, maybe this is not the best idea, but I had a big deadline and I was procrastinated. Well, I, I've just been busy, you know, so. <laughs> oh, I hear you. But I know, it's been crazy. So, <laughs> What about you? Are you doing any projects? Oh, yeah, I'm always working on a project. I'm still working on the shed, but I got the shed all painted. I'm really happy with it. And this week, I've been building a cupola, which I found out it's actually pronounced cupola, not cupola, which I think a lot of people pronounce it cupola, but. It's cupola, and it's the cupola. little, it's the little tiny box window, whatever that goes on top of a roof that has weather vane on it. Usually, that's what most people see the weather vane. It's called. That's what you call it. Cupola. Cupola, ah. and this is according to, um, I believe it's. Uh, I was watching this old house, and he said, "Oh, it's actually pronounced cupola." So, I kind of feel like they know a little better than I do. <laughs> Love that show. Yeah. Seriously. Well, that's sweet. Yeah. So, so what kind of material do you build ahead. that up? What kind of – I actually bought a little kit that was – supposedly I thought this kit came with my shed, and I just thought it would be easier, and it actually is with another shed. So I had to get on top of the shed and measure the, the um, angle that the shed is so I knew how to cut the, the cupola. So it's been um, a, good, a good learning experience, and I'm getting ready to add the shingles to the top of the cupola tomorrow, which I figure, wow, this will be nice. It's a nice little kind of test run for before I have to do the whole shed. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. that's so cool. That's super rad. I can't wait to see the photos of that in your cupola. <laughs> My cupola. Yeah, I wish it was lighter out. I can show you guys the shed. But um, mm -hmm. So, hey, we've got some exciting guests this time. Um, yes, we have yeah. Sarah. Yes, yeah, so Sarah Fogel from the Ugly Duckling House, and um, she is one badass chick. <laughs> she has this house, and she does all kinds of renovations and you know repairs, and has all kinds of adventures with squirrels and her dog. Um, and this is all herself, so she does a lot of the work just herself. We also have um, Lee Dahlberg, who his resume is so long that if I listed everything in his resume, we'd probably be here till the end of the hangout, but. He is, um, he's a male model, but he also really likes to DIY things. So he um, started this um, jewelry company called Rock Bands. And these are kind of cool. They're actually really pretty, um, I think they're like leather, or there's some type of um, material for the band, but then there's an actual stone or rock that's attached to that. Actually, I was kind of eyeing up. I'm going to send us some. For like, hey, look. I know. Yeah, Lee, if you're watching, <laughs> I think you need to send us some. <laughs> And then he also, so he also, um, see, I, there's so much I haven't talked to him more, but he, the thing he's going to show us tonight is he did this really cool treatment on his ceiling, and it's pretty cool. I think if my kids saw it, they'd want it in their room, so I should probably make sure they're not watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, aren't we the worst? <laughs> yeah. And then also, if you remember, we always have a giveaway every um, DIY Courage, so if you can see Sarah's message or if anybody has questions or comments, please make them in the group chat because um, anyone who comments or asks a question, you're going to be entered to win a $100 Duluth Trading Company gift card, which right now is about my favorite company because I seriously have been wearing their armachillo shirts every day because it's been 95 and 100% humidity or something crazy like that here. <laughs> I am not jealous at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, been warm. That means the ocean's warm, so it's been all right. Up here. Oh, you lucky duck. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of lucky duck, let me see if I can bring in Sarah. So I can find her. There she is. Sarah, if you're watching, hopefully you'll see this invite. You can join us, or hopefully she'll check her email. Um, but, yeah, I, I bet it's beautiful there, and it's just been disgusting, and we get thunderstorms every afternoon, and 
But that's kind of cool, though. Like, I don't see rain for months. I know. My sister, when she comes to visit from California, her kids are so funny. When we get thunderstorms, they're like this, like looking out the window. <laughs> it's yeah. like thunderstorming. It's like, why are you guys looking out the window? Oh, you know, I've never seen a thunderstorm before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, it's kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I think Sarah's getting ready to join us. Yay, yeah. Sarah! Hi! <laughs> oh, you know, I've never seen a thunderstorm before. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, so uh, Sarah, you don't happen to have any earbuds because we're getting a lot of feedback. Yay, yeah. yeah, Sarah! Hi! Can you hear me okay? Oh, you know, I've never seen a thunderstorm before. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, so Sarah, you don't happen to have any earbuds because we're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. 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 All right, Sarah, I had I had to mute you because we're getting like a seven second delay or some really weird thing. So if yeah. you do have earbuds, if you can go get them, and then we might also have to send you out and bring you back in, maybe, or you can try clicking that invite link again, and it might fix the audio. Oh, there she did it. Yeah. <laughs> Room that she's in, or is it? Um, no, because it was like a seven-second delay almost, and we don't yeah. we don't do that here. We don't usually put people yeah. in delay. Let's, Seriously, yeah. Let's see. Sarah left, so hopefully she comes back. Yeah. And then I'm gonna turn our link right now to let people know we are here, since we've changed our location a few times. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'll send her another invite and see if that corrects it, and hopefully we won't. I mean, so far, so good. We haven't had, that's our first issue, which normally on Blab, we had tons of issues. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So okay, we met with a dog yeah, trainer there today. We met with a dog yeah. trainer today. That was kind of interesting. Yes, with the new pooch, we have a new dog. She's huge. Yeah. <laughs> she's huge already. Right? Is she a puppy or is she? Yeah, she's, oh. she's huge. She's like three or four, and she's probably like a golden and a German Shepherd mix. But she Aww. is um, she is like attached to my side like all the time, and she's you know a little bit nervous and anxious, but it's kind of understandable because she's been in six different locations or homes or whatever in the past two months. So, oh my god! Yeah, you know, and how long have you had her? Uh, like two and a half, three weeks, I guess. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but she well, doesn't know. So yeah, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know sit. She doesn't know stay. She doesn't. <laughs> She doesn't really? know. Two or three years old? Yeah, she was an owner surrender at a high kill shelter in South Carolina. And uh, oh. uh, yeah, I know. It's really kind of sad. And this organization, they work closely with that shelter and they kind of assessed her and said, you know, we think we can find her a home. So they took her in and brought her, brought her up to Washington, D.C. area. And I just happened to see her on um, the Pet Finder website. And I pretty much adopted her wow. sight unseen. Which is kind of crazy, but my mom met her. So. Crazy. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, though. It's so rad. You got a dog. Oh, I want a dog too. Um, well, I have. <laughs> you have. Is that your parents' dog? It's our parent. It's my parents' dog, but it's pretty much mine. I walk. I'm, I walk him the most. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's a black lab, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, how super much? cute. Old man. He's almost fifteen years old. Oh, and how much does he weigh? Probably like. 50 pounds. Oh, okay. That's a, great, that's a great size, though, 50 pounds. Lena yeah, is... It's a, it's a I think he might be anorexic. I'm not sure. Oh. But he's a picky eater. <laughs> so is Lena. She's like 66. The vet said she needs to be probably about 75 pounds. She's like wow. skin bones, yeah. That's so. crazy. So I'm kind of curious about this platform. Um, do... Can we tell if people are watching or not? We have seven oh. viewers. When you look down on the right-hand corner, can you see where the title is? Do you see that it says seven viewers or no? Maybe only I do. I do not. Okay. Okay. We have seven viewers. So if you guys are watching, please like leave a comment. Let us know if you can see us, if you can hear us, um, or even ask us a question because you'll be entered to win a $100 gift card. And, um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you if, if you can't comment. Uh, tweet me. Yeah, tweet at Pretty Handy Girl or tweet Sarah Bendrick, um, Sarah with no H, and let us know that you can't, and we'll kind of keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. But um, hopefully we can get Sarah back in. I want to meet Sarah. So you know Sarah through blogging. 
I know Sarah's I, a blogging. Yes. And she's in profile a little bit. She's adorable, by the way. Like, <laughs> she is she's adorable <laughs> in person, too. <laughs> I'm like, that photo is so cute with the paint. I'm like, so awesome. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? I'm like, oh, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> right? I know, me too. But we're all good. We should all like copy her and send it to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she has a dog, too, Charlie. Charlie is her sidekick. And Charlie is a girl. And she's, she's a really sweet dog. I haven't met her in person, but I have heard all kinds of things about Charlie. Yeah. yeah, no, no kidding. So if we don't get Sarah back, should we chat about some DIY? Yeah, I think we should. Um, so I'm trying to think this is like putting us on the spot. Um, oh tell me God. about your parents' backyard though. I know you've been working on that. Oh yes, I have. Oh my gosh. So, so almost done and it was supposed to be done a long time ago, but you know, it is what it is. I'm pulling up photo. I don't know. Can you be? Photos here, kind of. I see your, yeah, I can. I can see. I see that your right, phone had. Here, oh, I took this earlier. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that was Sarah pre DIY courage chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So I'm working on this. Uh, I mean, I worked on it last week, and then I. Um, oh, hold it still. I'm getting mad glare. So that's a fireplace mantle. So the this right here is where's my finger this right here is architectural stone which means it's a stone veneer made out of concrete to look like Ooh. real stone oh cool now you can buy them. like it's a, i go like quality when i buy stone veneer if you buy um like a lower quality it looks like concrete that's like painted or something um but the nice stuff is it's great and then actually this part right here that you can see at the top oh my gosh that's so cool it's like mosaic yeah, it's like a mosaic. So I'm using real flagstones. So basically when we did the flagstone patio, they had all these off cuts to try and fit them together. Oh, and so I took all those off cuts and I'm flaking them on the fireplace mantle. That's brilliant. I love it. Love it. Yeah, I'm super excited about that project. It came together, like I had left it blank for like two months not knowing what I wanted to do. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> that is so cool. And you're using like the waste too, which is usually just thrown away. I mean, do they do anything with that? Do they ever... No. Way. grind no. it up and turn it into pavement. There's Sarah. <sighs> Hang on, Sarah. Somehow you got muted. Did I do it? No, maybe. Yeah, you're, I can hear you now. Sarah, can you, yeah. Sarah Fogel, can you talk? <laughs> Did I mute you? Can I? Oh, oh, I can hear you. I can hear you both. Yay! Okay, I'm still hearing a lot of feedback though, so. Oh, okay. Um, how, how do I turn that off? <laughs> you sound fine. Okay. So, and Sarah, you sound fine to me. If anyone's watching, any of our seven viewers are watching, can you please um, let us know in the chat? Um, all right. Did that work? And it all? sounds fine to us. <laughs> okay. We still hear you fine. All right, all right. I think I fixed the problem from my end, but all right. Okay, there was a lot of feedback going on, but I think I fixed it. Oh, okay. good. Um, so here's the thing. My headphones are Bluetooth enabled and my laptop is not. Oh. So I was sitting here going, shoot, do I have another pair of headphones? Am I going to get this to work? You have like your, like just your cell phone headphones? Well, again, I use like for running and for all that kind of stuff, I use this pair of Bluetooth stuff that ties into my phone. Oh. So for my laptop, my computer. Oh, no. high tech. I don't really have like a low tech one that I plugged in. I've got like my my Bluetooth ones that automatically sync to my phone, and I was like, that's not going to work. But I so, found these at the last minute. They're like these chic, very chic, you know, airplane. Oh, yeah, they're stuff, really pretty. You know, so one thing I didn't tell good. you is that Sarah's also really techie. In fact, um, <laughs> my web design and my site is thanks to Sarah. She has a second business. I <laughs> she does say this. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, um, Brittany was actually a dream client, so um, oh, that works out great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rad. That's super rad. Um, so I love your profile pic, by the way, with the paint. We were just talking about how adorable Thank you. Yeah. that Thank you. That kind of happened um, kind of as a weird accident uh, <laughs> with, my, with a friend of mine doing a photo shoot. So I, I really liked how it all turned out. That's really cool. Well, especially I especially like the color, but <laughs> so Sarah, we have some questions for you, and um, we want to know what you do professionally. What you did professionally before blogging? Like, what what's your background? Um, 
Well, I did a lot of coding and uh, customer service type stuff. So I worked for a technical company. Um, they did mostly, um, it, it, it's going to sound super nerdy, but it was basically workforce management. So we designed software that would kind of be more predictive of where people would, uh, where, you know, high traffic would come in and how many people you would need to supply, that kind of service level and stuff like that. So. Um, I did a lot of that and worked, you know, kind of business to business with customers and, um, yeah, it, you know, it had its time and place and I, I um, there were some aspects of the job I enjoyed, but of course, I found a different calling eventually and um, I enjoy this a lot more, so. Yeah, I mean, and well, that's, that explains a lot. That explains how you've got that kind of technical brain. Like, I, I just don't. I mean, Sarah knows when when she would be working on something, she'd say, she'd start talking to me or te you know sending me an email, and it's all in Greek to me. I'm like, are you speaking <laughs> are you speaking English? Because I don't know what the hell the hell it is. I try That's really hard to make it as plain as possible, but sometimes I just know, you know what? This is just it's going to go over your head no matter how I try and explain it. So <laughs> let's just let me just dive in and fix it real quick. So no, it it happens to everyone. I mean, like when it comes to technical jargon, I mean. Once you learn the language, it's hard not to speak it. So it's kind of like you try and explain something, and then you realize that okay, that's still too much information because it's it's like going down a rabbit hole when it comes to tech stuff. It's like talking so, but, bevels and miters, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have to learn the little tiny words before you can learn the big concepts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of woodworking concepts that I really don't know, so there's a lot of my blog where I just I either call it by the wrong name or I just say, oh, the thingy or, <laughs> you know, whatever, but, I mean, as long as there's a picture to support it, most people understand. <laughs> yeah, totally. How has the, um, your techie experience translated into DIY, or are they completely separate? Um, it, it has to some degree. I mean, like, you know, it makes understanding how to do, um, well, I would say that in my technical job, I have to do a lot of technical documentation. So I have to do like a lot of screenshotting and a lot of step-by-step, -step, here's how you do this. Um, especially when um, explaining, you know, like a complicated process for like how to register for something or how to go through and, um, you know, even just add one little piece of a feature to a piece of software. Well, that sometimes requires, you know, 10 to 20 steps just with that one little thing. So. Um, it actually made it the translation into like doing the tutorial a lot easier because I already knew that some of this was going to be, you know, you already kind of know, okay, this is how far I have to break it down for it to be easy to understand. So um, I would say that, that that definitely translated very quickly. That's cool. Yeah. Sarah, do you have the question? Oh, sure. ask <laughs> say what now? Uh, Sarah Bendrick. This is oh. gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be confusing, guys. I know. Sarita. <laughs> Sarita, is that I have to call you? You can call me Sarita. 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 My grandfather would say. <laughs> Did you get your questions? Do you want to go back and forth, or do you want me to just ask? Keep you asking. Ask one of my questions. Um, oh, let me sorry. pull mine up. You want to keep going down your yeah, list? Yeah, I'll keep going. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, I totally, this question I'm going to ask it, but it's just like even, I, I wrote it wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, well, so yeah. Well, can you tell us the photo, her accidental photo eventually? Did so say that, that again? I want to hear about your accidental painting photo or how that came oh, to Oh, yeah, let's anything. definitely hear about that. Okay, sure. Um, well, I had a friend of mine, um, she wound up starting her own blog eventually. She calls herself Redhead Baby Mama. Um, but my, in real life friend, Lindsay, um, she uh, has a lot of experience with costume design and, um, you know, kind of the theater type stuff. And so I kind of asked for her help because I was like, I really need, like, a good headshot. All these bloggers I follow have really excellent headshots. <laughs> and so I was like, I need one that isn't, you know, like the photo I took when I graduated college. <laughs> and that you um, someone out of. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No, that came later. No, um, no. Uh, so I just went over to her house and I brought over a bunch of tools and I brought over um, like all this random stuff that I didn't even know. Like, okay, fine, let's just see if this works. But I had recently gone to, um, I think I I'd already gone to my Haven the Haven conference the first time around, 
And from that, there was like a goodie bag of just like small tools and like a like a little container of this blue Annie Sloan <laughs> chalk paint. <laughs> and I took that with me and I just threw it in the bag. And I don't know what possessed me to do it, but when we got there and we started doing this photo shoot, she took a lot of, you know, pretty photos where I'm just smiling. She put all this makeup on me and I'm not really good at the makeup thing. And she just put a whole bunch of it on my face. And yeah. I was like, okay, sure, <laughs> let's do this. But um, about halfway through, I, you know, I was finally getting into like a comfort zone because like at first I was really nervous. And um, so when she finally started taking stuff out of my bag, the blue paint caught my eye again. And I just started thinking, you know, that paint is like one of those paints that you can water down and kind of get like a more of a muted tone and stuff with. So I was like, so maybe it'll wash out of my hair pretty easily. <laughs> like I, I make a lot of jokes about how I get paint on myself all the time and in fact it's part of my tagline you know like I, I say that I'm not doing gray it's just painting my hair because that legit happened to me right when I started blogging is that I, I went to the salon and I thought <laughs> I thought that I was all good and I was telling the stylist about my recent like uh, you know DIY episodes he goes uh-huh yeah I can totally you have a chunk of it in the back of your hair and I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no idea it was there the whole time. Like it was just like on the tips of like the back of part of my ponytail or something. So oh. the tagline came from that, and then the inspiration for that came from the tagline. And I was like, well, I always have paint in my hair, and it's kind of an ongoing joke. So maybe I'll just put a little bit in my hair. Yeah. And then we kind of started getting a little bit going overboard with it. <laughs> we put it in my hair and on my face, <laughs> and it just kind of snowballed and. Then we started taking a bunch of pictures, and at one point I was just randomly talking, and I looked to the side, and she snapped that photo. And it's not even focused, actually. But when you zoom out enough, when you get the photo small enough, it looks like it's in perfect, <laughs> in perfect uh, you know, focus. So I just went with it. I was like, that's, that's, that's definitely, you know, she took a picture of exactly what I'm like. So I'll go with that. So I, um, awesome. I just ran with that one. But yeah, we were doing such goofy stuff during that photo shoot. She was like... You know, we were doing the the Austin Powers, you know, like, look like an animal, kind of just joking around <laughs> with each other. Some of those photos stem from that. And there's a whole recap of that on my blog because I put a lot of the, like, not-so-great photos um, available there, too. Just kind of like, okay, just to show you how ridiculous we got. Here's here's a lot of the, the photos <laughs> the that didn't make it. like a smurf, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it got pretty bad. So hey but, Sarah, oh, that's you've, awesome. you've taken that. on some awesome, like amazing renovations. What's been your Thank favorite you. one? Oh, my kitchen for sure. I mean, I worked for many years on that, and I would say it's still not done. There's actually um, a new update I'm going to have for the kitchen pretty soon. It's going to be a like a new bar area that I'm going to install that's next to the um, sliding glass door. Um, Ooh, that sounds nice. It's using some of the leftover stuff that I have from my kitchen counter, so it's all going to like blend together really well. I'm really excited to have it in there because I drink so much beer that I should naturally have a bar in my house. Um, yeah, but, you should. <laughs> um, but the kitchen for sure. I mean, it was a lot of time and effort, and you know, I had family members helping me, and so there's a lot of memories with um, extended family. Like my uncle was a huge help, and um, my aunt was a big help with um, when she was for that, you know, for that visit too, and. Every little piece just came together over the last few years, and although I have still a few more things to add, I mean, like I put basically my hands on every single inch of that project, so I'm really pretty proud of it. It's really cool, and if if you That's haven't so cool. seen Sarah's kitchen, I put the link on the side to her all her projects for the kitchen. It's a beautiful kitchen. Oh, and it started like a hot mess too. So the before and after is actually pretty incredible, but you. That's somewhat easy when you start with such a mess. I mean, I had to, I say this all the time when I'm talking about the kitchen, that I had to use oven cleaner on the counters to get the dirt off oh, when seriously? I initially moved into this wow. house. Oh my God. It was disgusting. And I found fingernail, like press on fingernail pieces, like in my fridge. Oh, yeah. That's gross. I promptly, I promptly got rid of that fridge. <laughs> uh, but, oh. you know, just disgusting, disgusting kitchen, and then I turned it into that. So I'm, you know, even if it's not anybody else's style, I'm just like, you don't understand where we started. So <laughs> I'm still really proud of it. This is truly blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, yeah. Lots of tears, actually, when I first moved into that kitchen. <laughs> oh. So I want to know, did 
do you do this full time, the renovation, or is this like your hobby, or are you full time blogger and renovator, or what's what's your story? There? How do you balance your time? Pretty much now, I do full time blogging, and I would say that the design stuff is part time. So I split my time between mostly blog and then a good bit of design stuff. I don't take a lot of a lot of design clients now because the blog has gotten to be such a you know time consuming project. So. Um, I did have another job almost the entire time that I was blogging, including during the kitchen renovation, and I was going to school full time and all that kind of stuff too. So now I actually, even though I don't feel like I have any extra time at all because a blog's gotten to be so much more of its own thing, um, you know, I I guess I learned how to do time management from having to do the job and do the blog on the side, and then. You know, accidentally starting the web design thing when I wasn't really expecting to do it as a business. I was just like shouting out to some of my friends, like, "Hey, if you need any help, you know, reach out to me." And then they started telling all their friends, with which Brittany, thank you for doing all of those kinds of things. But Aww. it just spiraled into something that I was like, "Oh my God, this is actually a business now! Holy crap! I gotta actually support it." Um, so yeah, so just um, you learn to take on things in little chunks. You know, eat. Uh, what is it? Eating the elephant one bite at a time, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the only way that I can stay sane because this year I finally actually have a love life too, and that hasn't happened since I started the blog. So, um, <laughs> I've I've got a new whole thing to balance in my life. So that's different, but um, yeah. That's awesome. So what what do you do like when you're getting ready to take on some renovation and you're and you've obviously not done a lot of these skills before like where do you get your courage from like where do you get the courage to take on these big projects? Well, I haven't done any of these specific projects before, but I mean I used to do crafts and all that kind of stuff like um, from my grandmother and my grandfather and all of them kind of would be tinkering with different stuff and my mom would paint the house herself. She never hired a painter to, to do something like that. You know, we didn't make, as a family, we didn't make that kind of money <laughs> where we could pay a, painter, paint, uh, pay a painter and things like that. So we just did it all ourselves. And my dad was very handy, you know, um, at least, I mean, not necessarily up to, like, my mother's requirements, but he worked really hard. And um, <laughs> sometimes it just, you know, when you DIY, it's not very fast. So you just kind of prod along and through both of them kind of helping out, um, you know, I kind of learned how to do things with them. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> and so they would kind of help me out. And um, I really, um, I guess I got a lot of that kind of, like, courage from them is that, you know, my grandfather always used to, like, he made little houses out of paper and stuff, like um, like those Christmas Ooh. villages and things. Yeah. He would make them out of, like, toothpicks and popsicle sticks and, and cutouts of paper and things. and. I always just really liked the concept of like you know, doing stuff with your hands and, and all that. But once the DIY stuff really hit and it started to hit hard, um, I would say that I rely on Google more than anything else. Like it finds, you know, bloggers like Brittany. It finds tutorials that you know I don't need to write because somebody else wrote them. It you know all those kinds of things. So. Oh my gosh! Um, I don't know what people did before. <laughs> like they'd have to hunt down a neighbor or you know a friend or someone or someone at the home improvement store and and hope they they knew what they did what they knew what they were doing. But now, yeah, Google's my best friend. Um, yeah, or you know, have lots and lots of books. My dad will still buy me DIY home improvement books. And oh really? That's so cute. I don't really read them that much because I have you know the plethora of the internet usually available. But, you know, um, someday when I don't have anything else to do, I will read an entire book about a patio. I promise. I will read about how to install a patio cover to cover. But right now, I probably won't do that. <laughs> I kind of, I like look at all different sources, though. Like, I, I, I do have some of those books, especially the Home Depot put out some series. Like, they had the Home Improvement 1, 2, one, two 3. I don't know if, it's, if they brought it back out. They, st they was out of print for a while, but... There's like an outdoor project one, so like I'll look there, get the basics, then watch a YouTube video, then like Google, you know, then look at a blog post or something like that, and I kind of take them all yeah. and try to, you know, from there I get like a much better, more expert feel, I guess, for what I'm going to yeah. do than, than just one yeah. source. Right. I would also say that, I mean, it's usually just a matter of scale. Like, 
when it came to learning how to, like, say, tile my backsplash or tile my floor, um, back in college, I did this tiny little tiling a box project. And it was, oh. you know, little mosaic tiles, and I kind of glued them all down, and then I grouted, and then I sealed it. And, you know, I kind of learned the basic steps from tiny little craft projects that, you know, so the concept wasn't that foreign to me when it's when it suddenly came down to, like, okay, now I need to kind of put this on a bigger scale. So it may have been different materials in, you know, making sure that I used, like, the right porcelain, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, adhesive or whatever. But the concept was generally the same. Like, I kind of knew that, the, you know, I kind of had my mind wrapped around, okay, this is probably what it's going to be like. So, um, you know... Starting small is very, very important for beginners, and I definitely didn't take on those kinds of projects my first year. Um, you know, I I took on, like, a flooring project, but that really only had a few steps, and there was a flooring expert kind of store that I bought everything from, so it was pretty one, two, three when I bought those products of, like, this is how this particular product gets installed. So That's really that's really great, and I love the advice of, like, starting small. You know, people that, are, that like to do crafts, like, that doesn't mean that you can't tile a whole backsplash the next day. I mean, you know, right. it is nice. Start small or, you know, ask them to ask someone or even ask someone to come help you a little bit. Those are great ideas. So is yeah. there anything that scares you, Sarah? Like, are there any, <laughs> are there any well, DIY tasks that you won't do or are there any, are there any animals? Because I know you've dealt with <laughs> squirrels and all, she's got some crazy squirrel stories. Yeah, that one's not safe for work or anybody who doesn't like cursing. Because squirrels, <laughs> squirrels are not kind. Squirrels are not nice, and we got into a big fight. <laughs> I but, have seen that. <laughs> but, um, okay, so uh, I would say that plumbing scares me more than any other projects. Like, electrical doesn't scare me as much as plumbing. Um, I don't know. I just haven't felt, like, compelled to try and tackle that one yet. I mean, I've, I've definitely felt like, oh, well, you know, you know, you always kind of measure it based on the amount of time and the amount of expense it's going to cost. And to me, the risk for plumbing is something that I just haven't been willing to handle. I know that it's possible, and I'm probably going to, again, pick a smaller project and maybe um, try to, you know, bring that to a larger scale at some point. But maybe not this house. I've already done a lot of the bathroom projects that I need to do here. But um, someday. I mean, I've, I've replaced shower heads and things like that, but, like, not, like, re- you know, plumbing stuff. Yeah, free plumbing stuff is not really right. So, um, I don't really have that much fear when it comes to most stuff around this house. Projects on the inside uh, and the. Um, sorry, say that again. Do you do um, exterior projects too, or do you mostly stick to the inside? I do exterior and interior. So this year has been a lot of exterior projects. Um, I'm about to rent my biggest piece of equipment ever, and. Tackle what the backyard. It? I'm excited. Oh man, it's a um, what is it called? Well, Sarah will know. <laughs> is it a skid steer? Is that what it is? I'm trying to level out my backyard. I think Sarah it's a Bendrick. Steer. What's the answer? <laughs> yes, skid steer. <laughs> yeah, it might be a bobcat, depending on the size, but that's what I I haven't driven one yet. I want to drive bobcat <laughs> and and a jackhammer. Well, Brittany, if you want to drive. Drive really? down and help. Okay. <laughs> Fly me out. I'll come help you. Hammering <laughs> projects? What, Sarah, Bendrick, you were breaking up. What? Have you done any jack? Did you say you've used jackhammers or no? No, I'd like to, though. I haven't yet. I'm surprised out of, like, your plethora of projects you haven't needed a jackhammer yet. No, I might need one for our master bathroom. <laughs> it's, like, what? All, yeah. all tile. Probably a mini one, not like a... Every has needs a jackhammer. Yeah. And they're really not that... I don't think they're that bad at all. They look like badass, and all you got to do is, like, literally hold it steady and be able to move <laughs> the spot together. <laughs> Just don't jackhammer your foot. <laughs> I think the scariest thing, piece of equipment I've ever rented and used was a um, one of the, the giant floor sanders, the big drum sanders, just because I was terrified that I was going <laughs> to just sand a hole down in China. Oh God, that would be scary. Yeah, I'm picturing I'm picturing you standing on it and it like like taking oh. off with you riding it around. No, that's <laughs> that's the square buff, but the, the <laughs> sander that they used to refinish the floors. Like if you cannot you cannot let it stay still 
Because if you do, you're going to you know, wear a big groove into the floor. Wow. That yeah. was scary. So you weren't scared of like getting hurt. You were scared of ruining your floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I just paid a lot for these floors, and they were all reclaimed, you know, heart pine from this farmhouse, you know, and it was, anyway, they were just one of a kind, and I had already spent so much time installing them, and, and then I had to go finish them, and I was terrified. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That would terrify me, too. You, you definitely see that, that error um, on, like, Renovation Realities or one of those shows. Whenever you see someone who's using one of those for the first time, you see they, like, wear a divot into their floor, and then they just have to either live with it or replace those floorboards. Oh, my gosh. That sounds so scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like fun to me either. So we probably need to wrap up with Sarah and then bring Leon, but Sarah, I really, this is a question I ask almost every guest, and I always love to hear these answers. So is there anything, a story of you as a child that foretold who you are today or what, you know, what you do and like to do and basically the badass you've become? Uh, the thing that comes to mind... <laughs> oh, this okay. is good. <laughs> Okay, no, this isn't really going to be about DIY. Um, it's just mainly about attitude and this whole, like, you know, I know better than you do kind of, like, general attitude when it comes to, it's really helpful when you DIY and you're trying to instruct people and you're kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing, but watch. <laughs> um, so my mother loves to tell this story. Um, I was about, I think it was my second birthday, or I, I don't know. I don't know children's ages, but I think it was either my first or second birthday, and my mom had put me on top of um, our coffee table. You know, this is back when you would do dangerous things like that. Um, I was standing on top of the coffee table, and I was reaching for a balloon, because it was right after my birthday party. My mother was just kind of amused by me trying to do this, because the balloon was out of reach, and I just, you know, was getting very, very frustrated, because it was just, just beyond where I could get it from. And my mother just just looked at me, and she was like, Sarah, stand on your toes. You know, stand on your toes, and you'll, you'll be able to reach the balloon. And I was just like, so I, I just looked at her and, you know, kind of rolled my eyes at her. <laughs> reach for the balloon again. And she, so she, like, nudged my grandmother who was sitting right next to her. She said, no, Sarah, stand on your toes. Stand on your toes, and you can reach the balloon. And so I looked at her, and I looked at my feet, and I looked at her again, and I just had this look of, like, this won't work. And I put one foot right on top of the other, and I reached for the balloon again. Like, you idiot, I knew this wasn't going to work. <laughs> and, you know, since that day, my mom still likes to talk about the time that I stood on my toes. My toes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I think the literal, yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, sometimes just knowing the language is important. <laughs> yeah, oh. I'll say. <laughs> That's oh, it's funny. adorable. Well, lastly, most importantly, does anybody ever tell you you look like a Gilmore girl? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I was thinking that when you were talking. I was like, who does she look like? I don't know the actress's name. but yeah. uh, Her name is Alexis Liddell. I've gotten her. Um, I actually almost won a celebrity lookalike contest at my office once for, 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 for a photo. <laughs> the, two, the two photos, we had both were wearing like the same color or like had the same haircut, like it all worked well. So wow. it's, it's not no. that we're twins, but <laughs> who won that contest? I'd be curious because you really look like her. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I actually don't remember who won that. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of celebrities out there nowadays to look like. So. Yeah, your yeah, chances are good. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, thank you for having me on here. I mean, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. So oh. hey, Sarah, you're welcome to stick around if you want. Sure. And as we interview Lee, it's up to you. Um, Lee, I just sent you an invite, so take a look for it. Hey guys, if you're watching, if you leave us a comment or a um, question over in the chat window, um, we will you'll be entered to win a hundred dollar Duluth Trading Company gift card. And um, Sarah, do you have any Duluth Trading Company stuff? Um, oh, which Sarah? Oh, Sarah. <laughs> well, Sarah Bendrick, I know she does. Sarah Fogel, do you have any stuff? Um, well, I've done some giveaways with Duluth before, and I would say that most of them I've given away. I've, I've let my dad have all the stuff, and he loves it. <laughs> it's so, crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've let it's, my dad, I mean, both times it was for, like, a Father's Day giveaway, so I was like, no, nah, uh, I'll let my dad, nice. like, you know, get the prizes. So, or, <laughs> so like, what's his, what's his favorite thing? He got, like, the stuff. Um, I think he likes his jacket the most. 
Like he got a jacket from there, and I think that's the thing that he really like a flannel jacket kind of thing, or um, it's more like a winter coat. Like it's like a oh oh yeah, it's it's like lined on the inside, I think. But that's it's sweet. he really likes it. And then he he bought some shoes. He got some shoes from there too that I think he was really really into. But I, I have, haven't I yet have gone the... shopping with Duluth. I I'm I'm very much very much in love with their leather bags. I've seen them in person. Oh. And, I have one. I bring it everywhere. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It is I so like cool. I bring it to hell, and it still looks good. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Like, I'm I'm definitely gonna probably put that on my wish list for uh, for the next time. Yeah. I, oh I, my gosh, absolutely. Yeah, the purse is probably one of my favorite things I have from them. Mm -hmm. So it's, Lee Lee's trying to call in. But I think he's actually trying to start a different hangout. So Lee, I'm gonna um I'm gonna go ahead and send you the invite again. And hopefully you'll see it. It's always kind of no. new. Let's see. Mm -hmm. just so, Sarah, what, what, where in the United States are you? Atlanta. Oh, cool. All right. Have you ever crossed paths with uh, Anitra Megadon? She did a DIY show out there. Or Chip, Chip Wade. I've met Chip several times. Um, he's come to like the Haven Conference and stuff like that. Um, he, nice, nice guy. Um, I've not met. What's her name? Anitra. Anitra. Megan. No, I haven't. I haven't. Megan. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're both out of Atlanta and they do they do shows. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, I've talked to Chip before. He's a good. He's he's a nice person to talk to. Very friendly. Oh my gosh, Chip's amazing. Yeah, I really like that guy. Mm -hmm. And his wife. Have you met his wife? I haven't. Um, he's mostly he just done. done DIY shows with like, I guess meeting us at, like a huge slew of bloggers is probably not what his wife's into. It's all good. So like, you're the blogging world to me is like I'm still mystified by it, even though I've known Brittany forever. Like I don't blog. I know I should blog, but I'm like, how am I gonna blog? Like I, I just <laughs> that sounded. Really you good. sit down and well, start I, writing one day, and then you yeah. never stop. It's kind of a yeah, it takes thing. it takes a lot of it takes a lot more work than a lot of people think that it does. A lot of times, people. I mean, it's easy to say just start writing, and for a lot of people, that's true. But um, you have to have a very it, it, it's it all depends on your writing style. Like there are some blogs who take beautiful photographs, but I just can't read them because they're they just can't get into like what they're saying. But um, yeah. it all depends on like what speaks to you and. Um, and then, yeah, you need a person who feels compelled to write because there are definitely days where you just can't. So, um, oh my it, gosh, it I know. Yeah. Yeah. Writing huh. writing a very lengthy tutorial is is time consuming. Writing a good one is time consuming. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> they they definitely are. It's yeah. You just don't go into tutorial writing, Sarah. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Oh yeah. No. I'm doing that right now for my. I'm I'm writing a landscape book and I have 25 projects and I have 25 tutorials to write. Ooh. That are. Yeah. Doing. So you yeah. already know, like you've been doing this. Yes, yeah, so that's why I woke up at five this morning. I'm like, Bleh. <laughs> it's hard. It, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, wow, I'm really not a writer. And like when I got the contract to do the book, um. Oh. Like, can I get like a writer helper or whatever? I, I'm not a ghostwriter. Like, I wanted to make the content. But right. Like, we wanted to come from you. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Oh, you're like, great. Like, right. right. I'm just like, it's not my wheelhouse. It's not like, like I can express things and photos and pictures and drawings, but writing is harder for me. <laughs> I've done I've done the ghostwriter thing before. I mean, I actually will do it on a regular basis if I don't have the time and I just need somebody to write up the the gist for me, like not necessarily in my style, but I need somebody to just write. Like I need you know 500 words on this particular topic, and then I'll get it from her and then I'll tweak it. But at least I'll have somewhere to go because sometimes it's just a matter of starting. So I'll definitely use um, like I'll use some assistant writing help from time to time when it comes to like I'll do freelance writing jobs and stuff like that from time to time. And so when that happens, yeah, sometimes I just need to have some kind of prompt to get me started and that usually does. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Yeah. That was rad. Dude, what happened to um sorry. I don't not know. Sorry. So yeah, I'm trying to um Lee, I sent you an email. See if you can check your email. Um I sent him an email with the link. And it's weird, like I'm on Google 
um, plus, and I can't find how to send him a comment. It's not letting me. He's trying to he's trying to start a hangout with me, but he just needs to click on the link, hopefully, and get in. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm, I can try again. Let's see. What a bummer. Uh, so Lee is basically he has a company called You Son of a Bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, this is Sarah Fogel, this is right up your alley. Son of a bench. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> it's super rad. So uh, I found him on Instagram a long time ago and he has like multiple businesses. Oh he joined! Uh, oh, no. <laughs> All this talk about technically declined and I uh <laughs> everybody. I was just singing your praises. I know, right? Welcome wow, look my... at all those crazy lights in the background. Yeah, I picked the most like hypnotic place to stand and maybe <laughs> obnoxious place to stand. I just uh, find a desk here. Sorry about that. I was listening the whole time, and then you're like, hey, let's call Lee. And I'm like, all right. And I'm just yeah, you're like, yeah, let's call Lee. <laughs> hitting the go button, and everybody's ignoring me. And I was like, wait, Aww. there's something wrong. Aww. So, hi. Aww. Okay, we need to just let Lee talk because then we can see exactly what he's doing. And I'm going to try not to comment. I might just mute myself. I can't I believe Sarah in Atlanta told everybody that she found my fingernails in her refrigerator. That was supposed <laughs> to be that was supposed to be our secret, and it's really embarrassing. And, and for the record, they were my press-on toenails. So I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> oh, you it, have this whole new mental image words, in my head actually. now. <laughs> Man. Well, Lee, tell mm -hmm. us about, um, if you could give us the breakdown on the room you're in. and You're in the ceiling room, right? With the corrugated steel. Right. Oh, he's, he's frozen. Is he frozen oh, no, for I'm you? I'm good. I'm good. We're good. No, you're good. We're not frozen anymore. I can do some more light, though. Hey. Yeah, I don't see it. I hear you. There we go. All right. Yes, you got to my ceilings already. Okay, sure. So I have like a 19... <laughs> just cut right to the chase. Yeah. I have a 1967 house, and um, it has that popcorn ceiling, which drives me insane. And um, I have an artist buddy that was like kind of staying with me for a little while. I have kind of a house that I let people stay in until they get back on their feet. So it's sort of like an artistic uh, commune or whatever. So um, he was in need of some... Uh, some kind of therapy, so we do always do DIY therapy as artists. So I just trashed the room. I took it down to the concrete floors, and uh, he said something curious. He said when he redoes, he's he's quite uh, more established DIY than I, and uh, his name's Thomas Stillwell, and I've known him since we're seven years old, so a longtime friend. But anyway, uh, he said he always starts from the ceiling to the floor when he's redoing a room, and I thought that was a curious thing. So we're looking at my ugly popcorn ceiling and trying to come up with concepts that don't have my OCD going insane of scraping that stuff off and off and off and finding those little white deals all over the place. So we both talked about working or wanting to work with corrugated steel. And it seems like a very outdoor material, but I kind of love that, um, that you're bringing it inside. So um, with uh, at least I can give you a little show here if I can redo the camera here. So this is what it looks like when it's done. It gives the room like a really artistic kind of, it's, I guess it's quite modern. But then uh, you see I have my art on the walls and whatnot. But then we took it a few steps further. We, uh, we ran what you see is like large crown molding. That's actually outdoor metal guttering. And it's very light. It's very easy to work with. And we did that so that we could bounce LED indirect lighting from within the gutter up towards the roof. And you see it going crazy in the closet there. <laughs> that yes, separate that's separate system. I know it looks basically like the room a 14 year old dreams about. And that's <laughs> I know. Probably it. Glad my, my kids Peter, are Peter watching. Pan. And I, I love I the rain this, gutter idea. Yeah, it's something so light to work with. And it was just trapping the, um, the light from going down and bouncing it off the ceiling. Now, we also put these, um, it's just a laminate, but it's called uh, driftwood. They had a great deal at Lowe's for it, and it was fun to work with. 
And so I actually carried it. There's my assistant, Bob Marley. Uh, <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> I carried it in the, the other guest room here, and it's the same flooring, if you can see. And now I'm going to show you what... <laughs> There's oh, the, uh, the what happens when you put the little into it. Let me give you a little. Oh, yeah. There's the full trot. <laughs> <laughs> but if you keep it light and blue like this, it just makes rooms feel very cool. And um, I'm in Florida right now in Miami area, and I'm in Hollywood, Florida. It's near 105 degrees with the, with the index every day. So it's anything that helps... So I mixed in like my crazy artwork that I do um, based on poetry. I just kept the bed simple because everything else is super colorful. But then again, the corrugated steel ceiling is what really makes. And then you didn't the room you didn't have to cut it right because you 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 told me you earlier can, that you, yeah you, you, you just... could overlay it because it comes in strips of eight feet by two feet generally. Um, be careful, wear like heavy gloves because it does want to cut you to death. Uh, but yeah. we found some great love, uh, gloves and uh, just easy to work with. And you, you talk about progress fast. I mean, when you're getting eight foot strips down, you know, I just riveted it above our heads. We we made like this contraption to hold uh, oh, the okay. pieces up from the ground. Now this is to my hallway, and you know, I'm an artist, and so these. So are hey, artists. Lee, I have a quick question though. Did, so did you basically find out where your studs were? Well, not your studs, but your. Um, your ceiling joists to attach to the ceiling joists, or did you put up like yes, lattice we, or come, we, some kind of lattice? We measured, um, we, we kind of guesstimated, and then we, um, we so we pre-drilled like eight holes throughout the eight foot piece. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to show you, I, I did a, a wall of corrugated oh, steel. Oh, fun. That that's so between. cool in the bathroom. Oh, like it that. just pops color. My house is from yeah. the 60s, though it's got some really cool cabinetry. And I just popped a lot of color. That kind of goes with all my artwork and whatnot. But you're right, yeah, we pre-drilled, and then um, this is my room. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I did the ceilings as well. And, uh, so cool. and it's kind of dark, so it's hard to tell, but the pictures that... that uh... Yeah. Uh, a blue light to, like, its full effect. When you go into a room, it's, like, super relaxing. I've got some lights on just to show you what the the room looks like, but then you'll see you'll see the true artist wall again. So every inch of my house is covered in my artwork. But uh, wow. so that's why I liked it too, because it kind of comes off as if it's a modern gallery space. You know, I put the in this well, this one I have blue light under the bed as well. And all of these are, <laughs> that's awesome. You're so all Miami. With the, remote and they're easily accessible on Amazon they're like a 3M sticker you cannot go wrong with it it shows you where you can cut them in between the fuses it's so simple to work with it can oh, it's do a like tape. any color it's not... so it's a tape no, LED it's light a tape. I, did, I did the first two ceilings in one day and I did this room in uh, no I did the yeah I did the two rooms in one day and then one room in a half a day so, That's so cool. It came together really quick. Like I said, when you're doing eight foot pieces, you really feel a sense of accomplishment first. Wow. It's hard to see, but I have like really nice brushed wood floor here. And no, Those I do look nice. That. <laughs> yeah, so Good. <laughs> it works for me. I mean, this is only half the house at a really big <laughs> place here, of five bedrooms. And that's how I started with all this, is because. Um, Basically, in a five-bedroom house, everything goes wrong. It's like living on a boat or something. So you end up uh, having to kind of fill in the blanks. And I didn't even honestly own a power tool like two years ago. And then I started making furniture out of old cars because I, I love old cars. And so that became like the you son of a bench dot com uh, little side gig. And then... And I, I started making for bars and restaurants and schools and things like that. So it was a, I have a job. I just turned my hobbies into LLCs, and then that way I'm never working a day in my life. Yeah, you guys definitely need to check out Lee's website. Um, I'm putting the one, and you said the other one was. You yeah, you can just bench. do LeeDalberg.com. I know you've got links on name. there. Yeah. Or uh, Lee Arthur Dahlberg. It's like I'm in trouble and my mom's getting mad at me. 
for uh, Instagram. <laughs> All my curious. Uh, I have one more. Uh, I can't believe I'm going to show you, but why not? Um, yeah, go for it. In this other you know room what? behind the magic curtain is uh, just another oh, boy. floor I did. Oh, boy. But here's the weirdest thing. I had the ugliest 1960s bathroom. Oh, my god! So what I did was oh, I turned it into a full uh, spa. Oh, cool. I, that is so rad. That is so fun. I love it. <laughs> like a cedar floor. And okay. River rocks. So do you have to clean underneath that? I mean, this is the mom and me. Do you have to clean underneath no, that while yeah. you look like underneath? I mix a, a mixture of bleach in the uh, spray bottle and, and the white immediately. But it just kind of relaxing. I mean, I, I took this extra flooring, did was kind of try to make it a Swedish spa look. So I put it around the top of the bathroom, just oh, to kind of give it that nice natural look. But every morning just kind of makes you smile. There's a That's awesome. flower box I had on that thing there. And yeah, I did, definitely did not think I'd show you my ugliest I love it. The world. Oh, my gosh. I, like I, I forget having to redo my master bathroom now. I have all harvest gold tile. I think I'm just going to do that. <laughs> so put no, that on the floor. It's like a, a cool little thing. I just got the idea from a spa. And, uh, That's awesome. I didn't awesome. think I'd show you this either. It might be too dark in here, but... <laughs> Uh, this is uh, my living room, and uh, what I did was a, it's a reclaimed wood wall. So I don't know if you're able to it's get all dark. that, but dark. Uh, dark. I, I live like a like a man cave, literally. <laughs> but uh, oh, it's a complete, a complete wood wall that's oh okay, uh, I see you a little bit better. Wood. Very cool. And and it's not I, all it's not all horizontal. You've got it kind of just kind of pieced together. Yeah, exactly. And then I have a lot of my artwork all over the house. And then I do these sculptures out of wood and furniture out of cars. And I mean, yeah, I love the I love the little side table. Not little the side tables you have using the um, grills of cars. Exactly. This is a 18th century. Here we this, go. This is an 18th century pirate's chest that actually works on hydraulics. <laughs> there you go, Sarah. Down. That's where you can do your and beer bar. Yeah, That's of course, so it's cool. just a bar. <laughs> that is bar. so cool. And I'm then I have, I don't even know how many aquariums in my house, and I have five koi ponds oh my outside gosh. that I built. And I found them all on the side of the road, and I redo them. That's what I do with every piece of work. How do you redo an aquarium? Like, I know you get them well, if they leak. You know what I mean? Leak. Like, if it's leaking a bit or anything it's like new that. New silicone cock? Wow. Yeah. And then this is my... My office, and this is a piece I just finished. This is a a bench made out of a 1962 Jaguar, and oh, it's cool. the real leather seats. It's a leather seat from a Porsche that I found that was going to get crushed. And then That's awesome. this is a 1955 Impala. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Bel Air, and it's a uh, a complete desk. And underneath is a 1968 Cutlass Supreme that is now a desk. <laughs> I, th I made these to order for a nightclub, and the nightclub went out of business. Oh, no. But, uh, and these are Mercedes rolling benches made out of obvious Mercedes and things like that. So oh my, gosh. my office is kind of the catch-all right now between all my galleries, and then my house is covered in my artwork everywhere. It's a uh, dreary so cool. in the office. So I try to pop it with color. This is actually a Mercedes, a full Mercedes <laughs> with oh the grill God. and the hood. And it's a table, but it's so large that I have it just leaning there. And then a couple more rolling benches. These were made for a, a New York-style shoe store for people to try on their shoes. And then it went out of business. And oh, my, my gosh. Said, we know you loved your furniture. They already paid for it and everything, but they're leaving it here. So oh, wow. I, I went back. <laughs> so, That's awesome. At least yeah, they I mean, did that's that. That's really nice. Few, there's tons of projects all over. Like I said, it's a five-bedroom place, so oh my I've done gosh. every room. The only thing left is pretty much the kitchen, but um, I oh, have so designed to make it, um, I want to make it two-story, so. I'm you know, Sarah, Sarah very, knows how to do kitchen. Well. She's not too far, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, you just head on right. down to Miami. Yeah, I okay, sure. It's Fly me down and we'll one, see. <laughs> one, one, if we uh, redo the kitchen, I, uh, I promise it'll be entertaining, and uh, I'll get as many male model friends of mine as you want working in. 
<laughs> clothing op optional circumstances. So um, I'm just saying. You could call it model construction or whatever you want. Model construction. That's a that's a that's a it's, clever title. Yeah. <laughs> model home. I like it. Model home. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I it's like that Model home. Show. I like it. You know, I might, I might have to sign up for that one. Okay, I, I know how to do kitchens. You can fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So Lee, I, I was in Fort Lauderdale and I missed Lee, but I was walking around and guess what I found? Can you guys oh, see no. that? Oh no! Oh, hold on a second. I have it. No. I have it. I'm so glad. Oh, that no, I that photo. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was no. walking around like, at the beach and I was like, holy sh. Holy crap, that's Lee it from is, Instagram. It life size. <laughs> it's life size. I'm actually seven feet three, just like that poster. Yeah, right. So I was like, oh, well, I didn't get to see you in person, but I got to see you in person. That's hilarious. That's awesome. I didn't know about that, yeah. <laughs> I've been so in I have to say, you guys need to follow Lee on, on Instagram. He 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 gets married. It seems like every weekend he's always marrying uh, some young, attractive woman. And it's just so funny. Or then now, you'll see pictures of him with babies. Let's be clear. I'm not a Mormon. She means that it's a pretend <laughs> marriage for for my modeling jobs or whatever. So yeah, definitely not not for real. <laughs> not for real. Yeah. That is so funny. But it is yeah. funny if you don't if you don't it's really funny. get I it at say. first. You're just looking at pictures. You're like, wait a minute, wait. Wait, wait, what's going on? Every other week. <laughs> he can't keep a wife, my gosh. I know. <laughs> the, the bar has been set for real. <laughs> the bar All has been right, set for real. All know. right, I'm following. Oh, she's following. You got oh, cool. one new follower. Yeah. <laughs> I like well, this stuff. This is cool. Nice. So we really need to wrap up. Hey, Lee, th Lee and Sarah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed, you know, having you guys on. And, no uh, problem. Thanks for having me. So yeah, thanks creative. for having us. So you guys, this this broadcast will be um, live on YouTube, and I'll share the link with you, and so it'll still be people will be able to watch it after the fact, and uh, so hopefully they'll enjoy it. But um, every month we do this DIY Courage chat, and it's the first Monday of every month. This month's a little different because last week was July 4th, and Sarah and I kind of felt like no one's going to come on July 4th. <laughs> so um, every Monday, first Monday of every month, it's at 8.30 um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, and uh, we want to thank Duluth Trading Company <laughs> for being our sponsor. with quite a sinister smile. It's like quite the sinister smile. It's so funny. I'm listening to little face there. You broke up oh, there. Yeah, you yeah, broke up. What are you saying? Oh, uh, no, no, that's okay. I was just explaining, like, <laughs> your pictures froze on, like, a very, like, cynical smile, <laughs> and I'm, like, watching everything and going, wow, is she? Okay, I got it. It's just a freeze. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll show all my friends the link. I, I could barely sign in myself, so I'm judging my friends are probably in my intellect world and couldn't sign the thing either. So. <laughs> oh, you are so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah, work on that model home. I really like that idea, model home. I've got plenty of laborers that will work for ramen noodles as models. So. <laughs> is that, that on the diet? What's that? Is that on the diet, ramen noodles? You're allowed to eat that as a model? <laughs> well, or generally. It's like college on college. <laughs> it's a lot of carbs. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh man. Well, we should probably wrap it up like Brittany said, but thank you guys for joining us, and um, we'll post the link and share it around. Um, yes. Please, please be sure that you follow um, everybody. Go check out Sarah's website. It's uglyducklinghouse.com. Is that right, Sarah? That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. and then Lee Dahlberg, L E E D A H L B E R G, um, dot com. He's got links to everything. Like I said, his resume is so long that if we were listing it all, we'd still be here <laughs> till midnight. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you guys so much, and hopefully um, you guys will join us again next month, and should be fun. So take care, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>